Devo, I'm not sure if we're closer to the end of the world, but on the weekend, the mighty Bulldogs obliterated the Titans 32-0. And to make it even better, the Tigers beat the Sharks 32-6, and it wasn't a fluke. They played out of their skin. And what's even better than that is that the Dragons gave up an 18-4 lead to get absolutely smashed. What's happening, everyone? And welcome to another episode of The Kennel, where the dogs are in the winner's circle. Was it a fluke? Or did they earn it? Was it deserved? And can they go one better against the Rabbitohs? Welcome, Dibbo. How are you, mate? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Smiling, smiling this, uh, this I week. I sort of see you pipe up again, that's all. Yeah, us Doggies fans, we, we haven't had much to celebrate. So when oh, the Doggies good. put a... Uh, everyone's buzzing this week. All the Doggies are buzzing. I mean, those group chats... Um, they got a spring in their step. They quickly forget um, the bad years they've had previously. So one win does change a lot. Um, stellar performance. Um, I always expect them to score a lot of tries. I think the most impressive part on their behalf is that zero. Absolutely. You know, um, I, th- I did tip them this. I did tip them to win last week. So I'm sure a lot of people did. Just based on you know, their first two rounds, Parramatta, they were staff of the ball. Um, I knew there was going to be improvement. And just how they played against Cronulla, I thought, you know, Cronulla got a big leg up by the ref. And I thought, mm, you know what, they're, they're firms for me to win next week against Gold Coast. And over resoundingly won. I had them winning a high scoring encounter by a few tries, but they won by like five or six tries. That was a resounding win. It was, you know, it's a feel good. Like the players are feeling good. The club's feeling good. The fans are feeling good. I think, um, you know, all that stress they've had or depression is just from one win literally goes away so if they can make Safs go 0-4 this week I'll tell you what oh. Belmore will be buzzing the most it's in, in probably about nine years so uh, I'll tell you what um, you know I think w- w- you touched on a couple of things there and there's a lot of little things that were positive about the performance but what I personally thought stood out for me is that um, the team even though we've lost the first two rounds we didn't get I didn't feel like we got blown off the park as it seemed, right? I felt like we still, we came into this game, our defensive attitude was still there, right? We kept them scoreless and I think that's the most pleasing aspect. But for me, it was it was, it was a team performance and it felt like everybody contributed um, to the success of that, uh, you know, of, uh, of that game. And, you know, the team looked like they wanted to be there and they were playing for each other and they were defending for each other. Even against the Sharks, like 60 th- up to the 63rd minute, we're really only losing by six points or whatever it was uh, with a massive leg up by the uh, by the ref. ref yeah. uh, you know, disallowed try to Bileami kick out, so on and so forth. So, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. He was my man of the match on the weekend. Oh, yeah. I think he was fantastic. Him and Connor Tracy were, wow. Um, and, and, you know, this was a, a team performance by the Bulldogs. Wasn't perfect. I still think that we have... So much improvement. Like, you don't understand. I think we can still improve two or three X from where we are now. But I want to celebrate the wins when we get them because, you know, they have been few and far between. Um, but I, I, I do want to... And here's the other thing, sorry. Just before I go on, I want to I wanna make a, a, a difference. I want to call something out. So you remember when we beat the Char- the Eels in 2022? We came back, we beat them 34, whatever it was, 34-4 or something like that. Where, you know, Burden chases Moses. He was about to score, knocks the ball out of his hand, you know, pumps it up. What I, what I think was interesting is that was more of a, a fluky win in that it was after a, the Trent Barrett had been sacked, Mick Potter had come in as a new coach. There was that little bit of uh, rejuvenation in the team and they sort of went all out and put it all out there and they won. This, I think, has been built on sustained... Uh, yeah, it was no fluke. It, was, like, it wasn't something it was that building. just came out You could out see of, it coming. You could see it coming, right? It was built on that um, consistent defensive effort, consistent playing for each other, and trying to improve that 1% or 2%, maybe 5% every game. And, you know, we, we said at the beginning of the year, you know, there is there are a few players that need to stand up uh, to really um, help our team progress. And I, and I have to say, I'm so glad, you know, um, that it's come to fruition because I thought on the weekend... Burton, while it wasn't the Burton show, I thought Burton was really, really good in that he's starting to threaten. And there are a few times that I thought he's finally changing the way he's playing. So, um, and I want your thoughts on this, right? Is I saw Hutchison and Burton linking up on the right side. Burton is primarily a left side player. But I saw Burton come around to the right side, link up with Drew Hutchison on more than one occasion. Still a work in progress, but that's been what I think has been missing from Burden's game. Uh, look, for me, that's a traditional um, role of a second 
second half, like a second receiver. So your half is your first receiver. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of like evolved in recent years. One stays on the right side, one stays yeah. on the left side. I like how they've just gone back to how the traditional role used to be. So the second receiver, who is Birdo, is roving around yeah. the field. That's how it should be. Agreed. You know, and they should stick to that. And he's taking more runs. I thought that, you know, over the last two weeks, he's probably run more in those two games than he probably ran all of last year. As he's a, a great runner of the ball, and that's what he should be doing more of often and linking up with his outside men. His, his strength is running with the ball. Almost knocked the microphone over. <laughs> that's the excitement in him, guys. Oh, mate, you have no idea. I'm, I'm, yeah, it's all about that testosterone. Um, so the, the other thing is running the ball, It's starting. he's starting to... Uh, become a little unpredictable and the whole team seems to be able to attack in different areas as opposed to just sort of get the last kick it up high hope for the best the other thing that i saw from drew hutchison which i thought was really interesting and i think if this continues to develop we're starting to build some potentially strong attack is so a couple of the kicks that he put up were more um uh, uh sort of lowish bombs that were targeting the left upright sort of targeting where Stephen Crichton usually stood for the Panthers and scored many, many tries uh, for the Panthers getting the ball it's in that area. It's a game plan. It's deliberate. It's a they've, very good game plan. They've been doing it at training 100%. And it's, it's finally showing on the field. Someone's come up with a strategy. Maybe Crichton himself came up with it or maybe Serralda from his time at Penrith, but it's a deliberate strategy. Well done. I've, I can see a lot of uh, other clubs starting will probably copy that. Look, I think, you know, um, it's just... A, it's a progression of somebody. Bloody diva! Oh my god, someone didn't. <laughs> someone didn't put their phone on silent. Anyways, <laughs> must be the NRL calling him for his opinions on the teams. Anyways, I saw, <laughs> I had a, the only the only lineup I've seen is is uh, is the Dragons, and you know that's because I get the emails as soon as it's released. And I actually liked what I saw, but anyway, no one cares about the Dragons. Um, yes. so I'm just seeing uh, a a progressive um. Development of the attack of the Bulldogs. Look, I still believe that Toby Sexton could be a better half than Drew Hutchison. But look, um, if it's if it's not broken or if it's improving, let's see where this goes. Um, you know, yeah, of um, I have to say, um, you know, there's a lot of improvement in the team. Like Kikau, I, I'm telling you, Tanner Boyd is seeing Kikau in his dreams oh yeah Tanner Boyd he's seeing him in his nightmares like oh. this guy wakes up to go to the bathroom and he sees kick out not the boogeyman hiding under his I bed I think he's just crushed Tanner Boyd here oh and two besides the bye they're running last or they would be running last if it wasn't for the bye that's right are they running last or are they uh, the, uh, South yeah South are running just last just remember <laughs> South last <laughs> yeah anyway back that. to where they belong where they should be anyway <laughs> um, on, anyway um, Tanner Boyd I think he's just crushed his uh, confidence really like I wouldn't be surprised if finds himself out of the team in a few weeks. Like, that Gold Coast side is starting to firm as the favourites for the Wooden Spoon. I think they are um, right now favourites uh, yeah. for the Wooden Spoon, but... Especially after losing their captain as well. Oh, yeah, Tino's got, sad to oh, hear. He's, he's their spiritual leader. Man, and, and he was the only one that seemed to be trying to do anything. It doesn't have a bad game, ever. I don't think he had. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh. I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost tempted to say that he's overtaken Payne Haas as the best forward in the game. Uh, in terms of performance, in terms of consistency, yeah, in, in terms, terms of, of maybe efforts as in well. In terms of Injection effort, yeah, himself, yeah. And yeah. in terms of difference he makes to the team, Tino is just on another level. Yeah. But, uh, like, <laughs> there there was a point in the game <laughs> where Tanner Boyd was scared to kick because kick out just hounded him and I just could not stop laughing. And let me tell you, kick out has been, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best second rower in the game over the last two rounds. I don't think there's been a single second rower that has stood out beyond kick out. I think in that game against Cronulla, we saw his intent in that second half, like really picked it up, and then he just continued off where he left off from. Everyone forgets um, kick out was injured for large parts of last year. So and he wasn't just going to come back in. If he stays fit this yeah. year, he's, he's a menace. I mean, everyone, you know, we can't forget his time at Penrith with three grand finals, two premierships. It was a big part of that as well. Of course. And, you know, he's already got, I think, seven or six uh, Dalian points as well. Yeah, he's, he's up in the top eight or top ten. He was, if anything, he was probably the premier forward at Penrith. He was their, their most attacking strike weapon. Um, yeah, he was, he, he'd caused, caused carnage. He'd bag himself a lot of tries. Like, Yo wasn't their go-to for, for in attack to, to break the line. It yeah, there was Liam Martin. It was it was kick out. It was kick out, yeah. If and you they utilize him well, I, I like this one go back to his damaging best in attack. I know he's left a statement in defense, but... It's his attack that 
gave me some good memories. So, well, I mean, if you look at um, he just looking at his numbers specifically, yep. right? He's done, you know, he's he's run over 130 meters that's, over that's the past good. couple of games, right? Yep, that's we good. last year, not many forwards broke the hundred, the the, the triple digit mark. Um, he's you know he's got six or seven Dalian points. At, you know he's set up, he's, he's got some try assists, set up some line break assists, um, you know tackle breaks. And, and the thing is, right? He was near stop in, unstoppable at Penrith, if you remember. When he was always breaking the and line. And he's showing that aggression and that leadership in the forwards, which we yeah. don't have and we haven't had. Yeah. And he's finally showing it. And I think that's what's making the biggest difference. And Josh Curran. Like this, Josh Curran's been on another level. He's yeah. just incredible. Hasn't he's, he got a good duo there. And then and the others will feed off him. The others will feed off him. And look, Preston's confidence. the most consistent. Like Preston yeah. scored another try, has made some great defensive... Re- like it's just our second row lock position... You just need your players to stay fit, healthy. Like you, you, you know, he's we're doing very, doing very good. well. Yeah. Uh, look, another one who I thought had his best game for the Bulldogs was Reed Money. Yeah, Reed Money had his best game in a while. So I don't think he's played a better game for the Bulldogs. Um, you know, he was, uh, you know, uh, catching markers unaware. He was scoring from dummy half. He was showing that aggression, the little, you know, terrier, you know, pit bull type aggression that you want to see from someone like Reed Money and. Honestly, it was really refreshing to see him make that, you know, break from dummy half, have Taff backing him up, you know, pass the ball, and we're, you know, we're scoring good rugby league tries. And I think, you know, this is the type of thing us Bulldogs fans have wanted to see. Of course. Can we back it up? Can we back it up against the Rabbitohs? That's, we're going to get to that. We will be discussing that. But I think first, let's sort of really enjoy this win. Um, You know, he made 46 tackles and only missed one. No, that's that's a great return. That's a great return. Um, you know, set up, you know, set up a try, set up a, couple, a line break or two. Um, and you know, he showed us why we brought him over uh, from the Eels. Now, question for you, Debo: Do you think uh, him not being captain, not having the on-field responsibility, do you think that's lifted a burden? Of course, heads him? down, he can you now just focus on his own game rather than trying to um, babysit the other twelve players on the field. I mean, just focus on doing what he does best, you know, while still being a leader. So definitely a good thing to take it away from him. Um, I think it, it, I think it bodes well with either Crichton or Kikau. You know, one of them to to take the captaincy fits perfectly with them too. Mm. Um, Crichton, if you give it to Crichton, I think he'll do well. I think he has done really well. Good. I think he has done well, yeah. to be honest. Um, shows his energy, shows his uh, his leadership on the field, consistently yeah. talking, being the loudest one on the field. Like I think that's great. Um, and I think what's you know I would love to have seen him and Fox play a little bit more together, especially but Fox's time will come. Um, just I know it's best that he recovers from that injury because he's a strike weapon. Um, he's a finisher. He's probably the best finisher in the game. Um, probably the fastest player in the game. I still think he's the fastest. Um, he's an absolute freak. He he scores tries pretty much no one else can. And now with Kickout, sort of, um, with Kickout, and and you know him sort of finding some form, Burden sort of uh, passing, you know, his game passing game being a little bit better, and then Crichton sort of fitting in there. I think that you know when when Fox does come back, he can really start taking advantage of that, and we can start to see over the next maybe three four rounds that left side attack being one of the most potent in the game, and I, I strongly believe it could be. Where, where do you put Connor Tracy? Do you then try to fit him at fullback, or do you put him on the right side, or do you use him as a utility off the bench? Although he's got a lot of utilities already. I mean, Connor Tracy had a stellar performance on the weekend. He ran for 233 do metres. Put, do you put Addo Carr on the right side, or do you put Connor Tracy on the right side, and does um, your other winger is the sac- sacrificial lamb to accommodate both? Obviously, there's still a few more games to go before um, Addo Carr comes back. Well, actually, uh, it's, it was announced that he's a chance to play this week, and that was in the official team list, even though he wasn't named for the game. We'll, we'll, I'll go through the... It's probably the, best they leave him to Yeah, he wasn't week. named, but he is a chance to play. Um, now, Connor Tracy around for 233 metres, right? But here's the thing. How do you drop Wilson when I think he's been our best... Well, you don't, you're, not, you're not year. dropping him on any. You you can't drop him on poor performance. No, no you can't drop him at he all. He hasn't had a bad game. You can't drop him. It's Full just stop. that other players are just playing that good. That it's just. I don't. I don't think that Connor Tracy has played better than. Uh, oh, we'll see how it goes this week. I mean, Wilson. there's still a few more games, as I said before. Adokar comes back. He may come back this week, slot straight in, uh, in place of Connor Tracy. Yeah, I mean, 
You know, just saying Connor Tracy didn't do himself um, no harm in yeah, retaining agreed. his spot. Oh, 233 metres, that's it was incredible. Just such a stellar performance. It's just hard to ignore and put him back into reserves. Like, it was such a standout. I it mean, it was he, quality. I actually think he would be potentially a better fit for us at fullback, especially yeah, if he can rack up these does, numbers and does be. Blake, does uh, Blake Taffy then become your reserve hooker or something? Because he's a utility. Like, really, he can play in the halves as well. Well, I think, I think he's probably more suited to the halves, if I'm honest he's with a, you. He's a good player. I just, I don't know. Uh, he just seems very, very tentative under the high ball. And I'm worried that they're going to try and exploit that over the few next few years, especially when coming up against the likes of Melbourne and the Roosters. Yep. Um, you know, they're, they're going to try and exploit that. But, as I say, really, really want to um, enjoy this win. Very, sh- like, I have to, gi- I have to give a couple of shout-outs um, to some other players on the team who I think have been a core part of our team, uh, a-, a core part of our wins. Liam Knight, anyway. Um, <laughs> Kurt Mann. Kurt Mann, yeah. Josh Curran, yep. But I just want to say... When, when Kurt Mann comes on, I actually think he's been a better distributor of the ball than Jamin Salmon. He links up better with the halves, and I think his, his passing is slicker than Jamin Salmon. That's the first thing. Kurt Mann's been around for about, what, a decade? Long time. He's played finals footy with three different clubs. Yep. So he, he knows how to get success. He does, he does. And he makes a lot of tackles, uh, runs very hard. I'm telling you, I called it in the beginning, he's sort of becoming our... Mickiness in a way, right? Plugging those holes, but doing the hard yards and sort of, of being that sort of... He's really somewhat, somewhat of a spiritual leader. Now, the other thing is Kurt Morin. I know he's small. I know yep. he's diminutive. Yep. But oh my God, is he just a ball of energy for us. I swear he comes oh, on and he yep. shifts, the, he shifts the, the game towards us. He just runs hard, tackles hard, doesn't stop. And you know, he's... he's he could become a Ruben Cotter type forward for us. For, for me, um, pound for pound, he's probably one of the strongest pound for pound. He's very tiny. He's ridiculous. But I, I'll be honest here, frankly, um, I like to see another big body on that bench. Look, I would too. Like you got Kiriana Kotaga starting to look good. He'll be through. fantastic. Yeah. You got the other guy. What's his name? Lipoy. I know Lipoy. he's only young. Lipoy, Lipoy. But I mean, if he's starting to dominate reserves, there's He'll no be, reason. Yeah. He's a big body too. Jack Todd, I thought, did well in the trials. He could be another one that could you know, potentially... Like, I'll just have to see, th- you know, you get some big forwards on that bench just to, you know, in case um, fatigue, form or injury comes through, you know, and also just to blood these guys because you just need that depth as well. I'm with you, but I think what what I would like to see before we start blooding these guys is to get some wins under the belt. Yeah. So we've got one win. I'd like to see maybe another one or two before the bye, um, at least, just yeah. to sort of put us in oh, contention, yeah. just to keep us in touch got a, with the top eight. He's got a hard opening first six, seven rounds. So then after that, he's got the buy, and I think he's got a much easier run. So another couple of wins would, would be, do you guys yeah, the set up world so of, well. Yeah. Just as long as we compete, look, as long as we're competing, uh, like for me, that's really important. But if we can win, right? If we can, you know, jag a few miracle wins. And, and look, some injuries are starting to pop up in some of those, uh, you know, upper teams. Maybe we can um, show what we're made of. Yep. Um, but before that, if you made it this far to the episode, we just want to say, please make sure to like and subscribe. After Ramadan, we have some big plans for the podcast. We have some really, really cool things coming up. I know that we've said that we're going to start doing some things. Look, Ramadan comes in and sort of blows your plans uh, out of um, out of. Uh, uh, out of order and throws things into chaos but after Ramadan we have some really really big things coming and some very very exciting uh, people coming on the podcast so be sure to subscribe like this video if you like our our content and we've got heaps more coming up and we're going to also be changing up uh, some of the types of videos that we put out so the podcast is going to stay we're always going to be the podcast um, but then we're going to have some different type of content coming out a bit later in the year we're sort of been planning for that and we're sort of we're going to try and um, really provide some great content for you guys so if you've made it this far yeah, please subscribe like the video share it with everybody that you know loves footy um, now I wanted to change tact a little bit I want to talk about the cons yeah, go for it. Against the Titans. Because I think any um, negatives that we have against a team that was so poor, like the Titans, means that they would be amplified against a good team. So the first thing is the interchange rotation from uh, um, from Seraldo is still very poor. Yeah, Sam Hughes didn't get much game time. 20 right? minutes for Sam Hughes, 20 minutes for Josh Curran, 40 minutes or 45 minutes for... Uh, sorry, 45 minutes for Josh Curran, 20 minutes for Morin, 20 minutes for Hughes. The fact I'll, that forgi- I'll forgive him on this one. You know why? 
because he saw you guys were getting a roll on and a, and a decent win, so he probably thought he'd get the players to go those extra yards. Maybe that's his excuse. But against the Sharks, it was the same, right? Man got gets 52 minutes. Now, and, and um, Salmon's only getting 40 or so minutes as well. So for me, I think... I'm already starting to think Salmon's surplus the requirements. Anyway. Yeah, look, <laughs> he's not, he's not um, as... I think he'll come into his own, though. I do think that uh, he will start to go better, but I do believe Man is a better starting lock. Oh, hands down. I think Man will be a better starting lock. Um, Harrison Edwards? Uh, man, I would love to see Harrison Edwards back in the frame because he's a big body. He's a very yeah. big boy. He could play prop. Um, you know, but I think what Serraldo's chosen so far, I'm happy with. Yeah, he's got a win on the board. But not just that. We've shown, we've shown good, like, we've shown grit. We've shown determination. The other problem, I think, is... Our errors, right? We still had 10 errors against the Titans. They only had 12. Other teams, like the Rabbitohs, will punish us for our errors. Whereas the Titans just weren't up for it. Yep. We still missed 23 tackles against a team that offered nothing. At, against a team that's running hard, that's motivated, that wants to win, we will miss a lot more. So I want to see that number come down dramatically or alternatively not increase. If we can keep to you know 25 tackles, uh, missed tackles or less against a team like the Rabbitohs, I think we go a long way to winning. The other thing was, we're very ill-disciplined. So we conceded nine penalties. Um, Charity penalties from the ref. Regardless, right, I think that a lot of them, you know, we could have avoided. Uh, and, and some of them were for, for high, you know, unnecessary high shots and things like that. But we still need to be better. I think they're those areas we need to continuously continue to refine in order to avoid, you know, uh, getting left behind. Because I think that with the way we're performing, we may not like trouble the top four or six teams, but I think everybody else, we could be a nuisance for. And we'll win a lot more than we lose, right? If we are able to be consistent. Yep. Uh, and so, you know, I'm not saying we're going to make the eight, but I'm saying that I wouldn't be surprised if we did. I mean, if you're going to play like that every week, why not? That, that's, see, that's where the challenge is, also with injuries and, and making sure the motivation's there. Um, so, look, I think it was a great win. I'm so happy. You know, it was in Belmore, uh, multicultural round. You know, it's, it's probably one of my favorite round. Um, and to see the, the, the boys play so well, to see, you know, Jacob Kiraz just absolutely demolishing them there at right center when people were saying he's not a center. Oh, my God, that try he scored, that was next level. That yeah, was he's, great. He's getting, yeah, he needed a few games. Obviously, he didn't have any trials to go with. So he needed time to, to yeah. ramp up. And, my just, God thinking how if Sherry starts killing and he goes into the center and Crichton goes to fullback. Oh. That could be a very potent back He's line. He's got a good back line. He's got a good back well, line. Of depth. The only question marks I got is forwards and, and halves, but oh, they had a good game on the weekend. So, Look, halves, halves could, could come into their own. It's still yeah. the forwards that I think, because you look at, um, we had, you know, we only had three forwards make more, uh, break three digits, right? We're, you know, Liam Knight, 79 meters, Sam Hughes, 40 something meters. Barely like, played. Yeah. Do, do you know, like, like we need, we need to see, if you look at the top teams, you see their two starting front rowers are making 130, 140 meters. Their forwards on the bench, 100, 120 meters, 130 meters. Their second row is killing it. Oh yeah. Like if we want to, if we want to compete, that's where we need to see our forwards moving um, in, in that direction. Uh, look, will it come? I hope so. I mean, we've still got, you know, Daniel Saluka for Fida, who's, who's yet to, to play with us, probably plays first game in June. Uh, excited to see what he'll offer. He'll, have, he'll offer depth, which is good. And, and he has a big body. And you got Zane Teravano as well. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't know how much Zane Teravano will offer. Jerea uh, Mamasia uh, from yep. the yep. Eels th could potentially. I think, he, I think he could potentially. I think Mamasia will play. Uh, potentially, but it's like y y we need performers. We need people yeah. that are going to come in there and 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 go hard and and make us that 120, 130 meters. Because I think once once we're on the front foot. Especially if you say how Marnie performed, once our forwards start getting a roll on, Marnie will start destroying opposition. Let's not forget how good of an attacker Marnie actually is. The other thing I saw from Marnie was he's starting to put kicks in again. Yeah. He, right? he does kick a fair bit of 40-20s when he gets going. So. And they were offensive kicks, not defensive. Yeah. Right? And that's where I think the difference is also with Burden's big towering yeah. spirals, right? Yep. Is when they're done defensively because we're struggling... Uh, it never comes off because it's it's done sort of on the back foot. When we're attacking hard and then Burden sees an opportunity where, where the, the fullback isn't primed to take it and he puts one of those bombs uh, in a fence, in yeah, an offensive kick. up there forever. Mate, you will see 
the fullback, no matter who it is, they will drop it or they'll actually... Or he'll just pull. let it bounce and just cause nightmares. Right, so I think that's where we need to be. We need to be on the front foot a lot more and our forwards need to aim up, right? Um, so, uh, you know, that's sort of a bit of a review on, on the Titans game. Um, I want to change, uh, change course a little bit. I want to talk about some of the other games uh, yeah. over the weekend. First, I want to talk about Tigers v Sharks. Um, yeah, t- Sharks just looked flat against Canterbury. I thought, yeah, they were lucky to get the win. Um, Tigers gave us a good first half against Canberra and then dropped off in the second. And I just felt like, felt like it was going to be a... I just had this feeling about it, it was going to be a Leichhardt ambush, right? And it wasn't just an ambush. It was an annihilation. We called it. We yeah. said we said by th- uh, I said Tigers t- by 12. Yeah, I said by... I, mean, I had them winning by a slim margin, but pff, you know, they won by more than just a slim margin. Um, and Happy Curacao, that was just... The guy was he came up he was just phenomenal. Masterclass. Yeah. Masterclass just absolutely of absolutely slaughtered him. He'll be the starting New South Wales hooker. He has to be. It was absolutely just crazy. He was scoring tries, breaking lines, setting up tries. He was doing it all. I thought, Psheesh. What a captain's knock that was. Yeah, man of the match performance. And he had gastro the the, the day of the game. Sure. I think you should have gastro every week. Just <laughs> the Tigers, to be honest. But that was unbelievable. Was, he it, just played harder knowing that he had gastro. And and to be honest, like um, his his forwards laid the platform for him. Yeah, I was absolutely blown away. I think by the Tigers forwards. Yeah, they, they had a strong game, all of them. Uh, that was good. I think Lockie Galvin's there to belong now. Um, he reminds me of young Luke Brooks and Mitchell Moses. Once they debuted, they never looked back. I know Lockie, he's not exactly sending the water light, but he's shown that he belongs. Um, there's all this fanfare and everything. Like you know, it's just this. You know, the club's growing around him. Like, he's their next it kid, you know, after Benji, after he's, Moses and, and uh, what's his name? Uh, they got Brooks, you know. Brooks, yeah. He's, now it's Lockie Galvin. They've just got to find another boom halves partner to go with him. He might end up developing into a lock, but... Do you know he's body. 18, right? He's played three games. Do you, want to get, do you want to guess how many tackles he's missed? Oh, I don't know. 20? He's missed none. Wow. He's a big body. He's a big boy. He's playing second round there. He's before. missed no tackles. Right, that's the first thing. And I think the other thing is that he looks like he's not afraid. He looks like he's not scared no, of course to not. be there. Yeah, he belongs. And that's great. Just keep him there now. And having Aiden Caesar there, I thought, was absolutely and they incredible. they can keep Sullivan there as a backup hooker or half. As a utility. Yeah. He's a utility. He needs to work on his body and strength, that Sullivan, though. And he's, but, but I think he's he got a future there, man. injuries because he's, tra- you know, he's not strengthening his body in key areas. they gotta, they got to really get him in the strength and conditioning room. But look, they've got, um in those three alongside Arpi, and then you got Jareem Buller at the back. Oh, dream, absolute oh, warmer, dream the dream. Yeah, uh, absolutely, bro, absolutely. What, yeah. what? Have, how do they? How do they un- unearth him? He's just wow. Yeah, he's a what player. a fullback. He's a great player. At the Speed, back height, strength, already. passing game, just unbelievable. Like this guy, I don't know if he's from Queensland or New South Wales, but he's the future. I think of he's origin. Feed, I think he's just for, isn't he just Fijian? But I'm pretty sure he played his juniors in oh, Australia. Oh, then he'll be New South Wales. I think he's a West Magpies junior. So I hope so, man. Because yeah, what a, what an incredible young man. Um, but I, look, I have to, I have to again, I have to wrap the forwards uh, of the Tigers. Oh, that was strong. Yeah. Yutoi Kamanu, 190 meters. Yeah, crazy. Right. He made his debut for New South Wales. Don't forget. So he's a boom. If he player. can continue that, I don't see why he couldn't partner Payne Haas. How did Cl- uh, how did David Clemmer go? Clemmer was all right. Still, still broke three. Uh, what's it called three digits? Did very, very well. Um, <laughs> Samuela Fainu, what an absolute, absolute freak! Yeah, you know what? Fulton brought him over from Mali, and then, and then they got rid of him. Yeah, thanks. But I think um, um, Shane Richardson was on record today um, explaining why they had to let Fulton go. They said it wasn't his own fault. It was just how the direction the club wanted to go, or something like that, around recruitment, or something like that. It wasn't his. Yeah, Richo was on record. I think yesterday or today it was about a four and a half minute clip. I was look. I would give him through. I would give Benji keys to the empire. Let him. You run know it. what? Um, Benji's tigers through and through. Um, he bleeds black and gold, or black and orange, however you want to identify it. Um, in the sheds after the game, they were leading the team song, and then I, I Benji, loved like, seeing that. I loved seeing that so much. Well done, man. That guy goes to bed probably thinking tigers. Wakes up tigers when he stopped playing. When he wasn't at the club, he still cared about the yeah. tigers. Obviously, when he wanted to get a coaching gig, um, he would go it, was, it was only ever one yeah, option. And he's got yeah. Robbie Farrell beside him. So, Robbie Farrell was one of the best. He was a great defender, Robbie. Um, so, yeah, 
Oh, sorry. But Robbie will work with the defense. He doesn't need to work with Appy Coruscant because he knows Appy's just got all the attributes. And they've got John Morris there as well. Yeah, John he was, Morris. He also, took, yeah, he was a very able coach at Cronulla. Very, very she able let coach. Go, yeah, um, for Craig yeah. Fitzgibbon. But look, I think they've got something there. That, you know, I called it at the beginning of the year. I thought that you know they've got the attack. They just need to get their defense right. If they can continue to get that right, man. If they can keep the players fit, they'll lift. They won't come last. You know, they'll, 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 I'll expect them to go up a few spots. Ninth. <laughs> They're ninth at the moment. Yeah. I know. The irony. Uh, Even after the first round, they were ninth. I mean, I mean, that was after getting the bye. Do you know, um, I thought Justin uh, Olam as well on his debut game for the Tigers ran yeah. 177 meters was just an Got absolute a, nightmare a, for the Sharks. I think Talakai went to his shell. Uh, everyone was waiting for a mouthwatering clash. Oh, no, I thought Talakai played well, man. I thought he was their best. I thought Talakai was the Sharks' best. Yeah, okay. oh, fair. And Mulatalo was quiet. Yeah, Mulatalo was definitely I like quiet. I always like seeing Mulatalo in the action. He's just exciting to he watch. He is, he is. But I thought Aiden Caesar's kicking game really stunted. He's, all, he's always, uh, you know, the he Sharks. Good, yeah, it, Caesar's always had a good kicking game. Remember yeah. him at Canberra? Yeah, it was great. It he's was got very a big good. boot on him as well. He's got like a banana kick, the yeah. way he bends it and all that. It was very the good. short king game's fantastic as well. Good did signing. You, did you see when he was um when he was taking the conversion? He was like Bismillah. I was like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> it was great. Look, I loved seeing it. It was it was just such a such a good performance by the Tigers. Yep. And I really really hope that they can um back that up against the Eels uh on um yeah, I think it's Easter Monday. Um, you know, I Moses is out. Look, I just want to see the Eels get thrashed. I'm sick and tired of the same clubs who've been getting leg ups from the NRL yeah, for the last 25 100%, plus years. 100%. Leg up after leg up. Just give up NRL. They can't win a premiership. All right. Any para fans watching, I hope so. I hope you just take it to heart. You just want their drought to go longer than the than the uh, than the Dragons. It's really longer than the Dragons. No, the Dragons went without a premiership for like forty years. Thirty-one years. Paras like at was it was the thirty-one? Yeah, thirty-one. Oh, why Paras think, already at thirty. Why do I think the Dragons were shitter than that? Oh, well, everyone was just used to them winning and then they just lost grand final after for 31 final. years. Yeah, they lost. I think in that stretch, I lost about five or six grand finals. Yeah. Um, so it's good to see the Broncos get smashed by the Panthers. I was happy to see that. Yeah, um, they were very, they did have some key players out. Um, I think Parra's gonna, man, if Parra better hope they win half their games without Moses, back to Parra, sorry, but because if they go literally two and ten in the next. Put an X for him for the for this year as well. Uh, but I think Junior Bowler has 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 been like, one of the difference I'll tell you for what, them. When him and Madison came on on the weekend, yeah. absolutely changed the game. In saying that, they got some hot hometown decisions. They did that. They did. They, they always did. do at Para Stadium. I'm just sick of it, bro. Really? Same, same sides always get the calls. Same side always get the calls. Um, Dragons and Cowboys. What happened to your team, mate? Um, yeah, eighteen four up. And then for Raymond Fatale and Mariner wasn't playing too badly. He just playing dropped, well. Yeah, dropped the ball cold. Um, I know everyone's saying that dropped the ball cold four times in try scoring position or they're about the score, but I mean, yeah, eighteen four up, and you can see five or six tries unanswered. It's don't worry about the tries you bombed. It's the forty six you conceded. Yeah, hundred percent. How they wilted was absolutely horrible. And you know what? Ben Hunt came out and he was frustrated and said, "No one listened to me on the field." He has every right to say that because that is frustrating for someone that can go to other clubs that are playing finals footy, you know, there's every right to come out and say that, kick him a, give him a kick up the upside, the backside rather, but just no resiliency. Absolutely embarrassing. In front of your home crowd yeah, as well. Yeah. It was that, is that mental toughness that they need to be able to win those games where they're leading. Like, sure, the Cowboys have come across, come back and, you know, scored a lot of points and that's fine, right? But they got, they've gotten cocky after that first round. They thought... Oh, yeah. And then they came to Redcliffe. Um, they played absolutely horrible. And then point. they thought, oh, it couldn't happen twice. And then they came into this game and they they scored three to begin with and were about to have their fourth. And then thought, oh, yeah, we'll get them. We'll get them. And then became 22-18, 26-18. It was never coming after They've that. They've had 86 points put against them, against them in two games. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That's... 90, I mean, 90 to begin the first three. That's 30 points a game. I'm, look, I'm that's a doggy, unforgivable. I'm a doggy supporter and I, I don't really have any right to speak, but... Have, you, you're doing a lot better. Have every right to speak, but you, but you don't you don't want that to become the thing where your defense is is pathetic. And, and to be honest, like they've had five seasons down at the bottom. Like, do you just want to be there for another five yeah. seasons? And you've got a new coach. Uh, he's put some good things in place. But look, look, it, he should make it clear to these players: if you perform, I'll keep you. If you don't, you're out. I've got. I'm here for the next four years. 
I really want to drastically change this playing roster, including Ben Hunt. Ben Hunt's probably got another year and he's gone anyway. He's not young. He's 34. But I, I thought the agreement was he'll just stay for this year and then next year he'll move on. Yeah, he can go on from next year. Like, in all honesty, he's been there for, what, six or seven seasons? He's had some good players around him. Yeah, but he makes the biggest difference to your team. Regardless, Without him... Re- regardless, it's time for change. That, think about it. He's it may 30, be. He's maybe. 34, he's 35. Yeah, what maybe. are you hanging on to him for? Let maybe. him go. See you later. Maybe. Either this year or next year. It's his last year. Yeah. It's time to go. They gotta, but he's they not the problem. Find someone. But he's not the problem. He's not the problem, but it's time for change. Jack Bird should not be at centre. Of course, slow eyes. Him and Lomax should are the slowest. Should not be at centre. Him and Lomax are the slowest wing centre par- partnering in the game. And then the second slowest wing centre partnering in the game is the other side of Rafaloa <laughs> and Sully. We got the slowest back line. I feel sorry for Sloan because but they are the pun- his pace But they are the punchiest. Like, they can cause They're punchy, dis- but they're slow. You need speed to burn. Like yeah, look. Hamasai Tabuai Fodo was running rings around them the other week. I just don't understand Flanagan's insistence on keeping Blurred at, uh, Bird at centre. Um, you know what? And, and Lomax got man of the match for him again on the weekend. He was their best player probably on the unbelievable. Weekend. The guys, that but, you know, Bird center's gone past him now. He's yeah, got to, he's got to go back into the yeah. lock or 100%. or just give him an early release. Some club will snap him up. They can have him. Yeah, or he, he can even he can even be a big body on the bench. It's not a problem. But he's just not. You can't have him playing at center for eighty minutes. He's just not that man. He's just not that guy anymore. And he's not. He's got a bit of injuries. Like he's got a bit of a, that arthritic condition or something as well. He's not quick enough. It's just they were running past him. Yeah, they were. Um, Even um, on the weekend, they ran past him a few times as well. No good, man. Warriors Raiders. I thought it was a good game. Warriors did well to win. It was a good game. Uh, I reckon Warriors got a few hometown decisions and that. I, I don't care what anyone thinks, but they've been getting a lot of calls ever since their sponsor came out. Um, in saying that. Uh, I thought they deserved the win. It was a close game. Good I, don't know, I don't have them making the four. I'll be honest. I'm going to stick by it. Oh, look, they started very slow last year as well. They've got a few new players in their team. Their fullback, uh, Charles Nicholas, is still uh, uh, not back yet. I was pleased with what's his name when he went to fullback. Uh, Roger. Roger. Roger oh, Turn back yeah. the clock with that try. Amazing. Wow. Amazing. But, 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 but let me tell you, I do think that they will come into their own and they will, they will be on a hot streak. Trust me. They started I just don't have them in the four, that's all. They started slow, um, but they'll get there. Night Storm, I thought that was also a very interesting game. Um, yeah, no, man, Melbourne is so good. Like No Nelson Asa for Sol- Solomon, no Cameron Monster, no Jerome Hughes. Um, yeah, like they're just missing their key. Like They're missing their first choice halves. And, they are. Um, uh, imagine and they, when they get their full lineup, full strength. They'll be good. They'll be yeah, very, they'll very be good. top four for me. But but I mean, rumor I, rumors are that um, Nelson as for Solomon is on the outer. And Not Robin. really. He had a game on the weekend. He came back from hamstring. He got some game time. He did like ten tackles uh, over a hundred meters, and then gave himself a fail for his performance. He wasn't impressed. Good on him. But I mean, he'll be back there in a week or two. I mean, if Bellamy's. If Bellamy, if he was on the outer, Bellamy would have tossed him out of the club already. Don't don't believe the hype. Oh yeah. I mean, don't believe the bullshit rumors because you know Bellamy's from the same cloth as Wayne Bennett. I find, and those guys used to cop so much negative yeah. press and bullshit. But they stick loyal as well. And then that players in their team, and it's like, yeah, where's all these bullshit rumors coming from? Don't worry about um, um, News Corps and the Daily Shitty Graph spreading the spreading those rumors. So it's all good. Now, Roosters and Rabbitohs. Annihilation. Right. You know, I did tip the Rabbitohs, but. When I found out what the lineup was and I changed my tips online, I went Roosters. And it was a resounding win. Um, yeah, South's got a lot of soul searching because a lot of players will find themselves out of first grade and the coach will find himself out of a job very soon if that does not pick up. I, I think it's uh, I think it's definitely a coaching issue and not a personnel issue. And I think that Jason Dimitro is a shit coach. If, if, uh, a if couple of the times he's come out yeah. um, and he's done things against other teams yep. um, that have been absolutely pathetic, I think, and have not been, not only not in the spirit of the game, but have been quite selfish. And I think for, a, for no self-respecting coach would act the way Jason Demetrio does. And the fact that Sam Burgess had that blow up because of how some players were receiving preferential treatment uh, over others, it says a lot. And oh. I think... No, but hang on. I wouldn't believe that. No, come on. What do you think? You I think, think Sam Burgess, a legend of the club, would just leave unceremoniously for no reason? I think it's a deeper issue than that. I mean, South's ain't even in addressing that. I don't think it's to do with that. I think it's just some deeper issue that South's are showing respect to Sam by not revealing what it is. And, it, you know, if he keeps running his mouth, they might eventually 
Well, well, let, let, let's hope because right now everything that Sam but is that Sam is saying is showing itself. I don't think it was about that. He never, you know, I don't, I don't know. I haven't read a report where he said it was about that. Look, but correct. If it's true that it's to do around, I mean, imagine, imagine it's, imagine it's Latrell telling the coach how he wants to train. That's when alarm bells are ringing, you know, because that's wrong. You're mm. not there to tell the play, the play. I don't think that's true. Look, but in saying that. Um, the the, the, the Rabbitohs have problems. Yeah, you, I think you, Cody's been off his game. Um, Cody never performs when he needs to. He only performs. He really he's a flat track. To, he's a flat track bully. You know, he really needs to pick it up this week. He's been off his game for a he, bit. He's a flat track bully. And, and Latrell needs to look, look. I don't think he's paid badly. I think he's just copying all the flack. If anything, it's the forwards for me. I think Latrell's actually tried very hard. I'll be honest with you. I think it's just the forwards aren't running with um, any anger. I mean. I mean, like, Tom Burgess cops heat, but he's off the bench these days. He's not a starter. Like, your starters are yeah. Your starters are Totola. And Totola's not had a, a stellar start to the year. Kepi? Uh, sorry, not Kepi. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Kepi. I thought Kepi was quite average on the weekend. Yeah, he was. That's he, another one that should be copping yeah. flat. So, Ke- Kepi? Colin Matangi hasn't been bad, but I know he can do better than that. Ke- Cam Murray plays out of his skin, but I think he's got to play a bit smarter. And I, I think it's your forwards got to be copping the flacky. Uh, he probably is, Murray was on a um, Murray wasn't playing w- wasn't at lock. He was playing on the on the edge, and I think he's better at, at lock. lock. Yeah, he's definitely a lock. Um, what's the lineup like this week for Souths? Are we allowed to discuss that now? Yeah. So so this is what I was getting to. So now it's like okay. So let's talk about what the get what what it looks like. You know, next let's week. Hear this. So our team is unchanged from against the Titans. So yeah. still kind of Tracy at five. Um, Black Taff at fullback. Yep. Yep. Same. Um, the only thing that was mentioned was that potentially um, that Fox may still come in. There's still a chance to play on Friday. Yep, all right. Uh, yet to see that. However, the Rabbit has made some changes. So, um, same back line, Cody Walker at six. Dean Hawkins stays at seven. Ooh, Lachlan Innes. Falls have changed. So, Tavita Totola at eight. Damien Cook at nine. Burgess at ten. Oh, he's starting now. Colin at eleven. Host at twelve. Murray at lock. On the bench, Michael Cheekham. Talis Duncan, Shakai Mitchell, and David Mawali. He's dropped Sil- Silva Havili, Sean Kepi. Out of the 17. Out of the 17. I told you, Kepi was very average on the weekend. Let me tell you, this bench... Mawali, I reckon, will have a good game. I actually think Mawali hasn't been performing that well either. Why don't you guys try to sign him? Let me tell you. Yeah. I actually think that this is a heavily, heavily weakened bench and gives us... A stronger chance oh, to win. Uh, definitely. I I'll, I'll agree here. It's your best chance to beat him in a few years. When was the last time you beat him? A few years ago? Five years. Five they years. They haven't okay. been in five years. Or the last they're, five teams. They're 0-3. They're hurting. They're copping flack from the meter. You guys are on a high. They've had some personnel change. I reckon, yeah, I reckon you guys, it's your best chance to beat him in a while. I think pound for pound, our bench is better than theirs. So they've got Michael Cheekham, Talis Duncan, Shakai Mitchell, and David Moali. Davey Moali. We've got Kurt Mann, Samuel Hughes, Josh Curran, Curtis Morin. Different kind of, mate. They've got like three front rowers, kind of. Well, who, who's their three front rowers? They've only got really oh, Shakai no, Mitchell and David that, Moali. Yeah, Dallas Duncan's a second row, really. So he's, a, he's, he's small. He's the who size the, of who Curtis the, Morin. Who's the other Benji? Uh, Michael Cheekham. No Jai Gray yet. No Jai Gray. Even though I thought Jai Gray might have uh, been, yeah. I'll yeah. wait till that guy plays first grade. Look, if... if we keep talking about him every week, eh? He'll Doesn't get his. He'll and get we his. We only saw him that one time yeah. in the trial. But Jeez. he was great. But look, if what Naomi Kikau can do to Dean Hawkins what he did to Tanner Boyd, I think we have a strong chance of winning. Yeah. We just can't let them. Uh, r- like so, Jack Wyden up against Jacob Kiraz now, and Wyden's not playing, is he? Is he playing? Yeah, he's playing. I think he still might miss it though. He's got a knee issue. Just to let you know. I mean, I- I'd like to see him play. Um, he might know. miss. He might be missing this week. R- Rabbitohs fans might have a sook. Um, if we beat them without, uh, you know, Jack Wyden. Um, so I'd like to see him play. And I, I honestly... I'd like to see him go 0-4. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I actually give us I actually give us a chance. I give us a strong chance. Well, you start, you'd be, are you guys the favourites? No, Rabbit is the favourites. They're 0-3 and you guys... Mm, all right. What, what are the... Anyways, yeah, go on. Uh, I, I give us a strong chance of winning. So do I. I honestly think Man, we... If he's win, I wouldn't be surprised. Even though, like, the consensus might be the tip south by a try or two. But there is honestly no surprises if Canterbury win. They deserve oh, for me. They deserve to be favourites. Doggies one to twelve, I reckon. For me, they deserve to be favourites. Where's the game at? Uh, it's uh, in the showground. Uh, oh, is it? Whose home game is it? 
Uh, it's a good question. I, th- I think it's the Rabbitohs home ground. Fair enough. All right, good. If it was a Canterbury home, game, home ground, I would have been pushing to have it at Belmore again. That would be mad. But they will, got to they got to have a fortress. They used to show the, the thing is they used to show they would never do the Easter show around um the Easter Easter show match because it's four p.m. on a Friday and people go to the game and then go to the Easter show or vice versa. So what's the, is this the Easter show? Yeah, four p.m. on Friday. Cool. Are we going to the Easter show this year? Nah, probably not. Waste of money. Eh? Yeah, just yeah, grow it. Exactly. I don't know. When I used to go there for the cows and the my yeah. <laughs> Try and the show bags. And try to pinch a few eggs of the uh, exotic birds and uh, <laughs> and chickens on, you know, and just ho- get an incubator. No, I'm only kidding about the last part, but I saw a few people do it. <laughs> um, so, look, I I, I, I hope Josh Adekar plays, but seeing the numbers that Connor Tracy put up, I think if he puts up another 200 metres, he's going to make a case for himself where he's hard to drop and then, you know... Um, Seraldo will have a bit of a... Tough call. Tough I mean, call, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, look, your call, what, 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 are you, what are you saying? Such a tough game to pick. Like, you want to go south, you think, because oh, I'm previous reputation. Uh, but you know what? Let's kick them while they're down and let's go to let's go Canterbury by... You know what? Let's go Canterbury by 10. Yeah, I'm going Canterbury by 12. Let's go Canterbury yeah. by 10. So, not just a try, more than a try yeah. out of south's reach. Dogs and by then 12. their fans can march at, to Town Hall again when they get kicked out of the comp again, hopefully. Anyway. Quick calls. Roosters and Panthers. Uh, Cleary is out for two to four weeks. Where is this ham- game at? Hammy, hammy injury. Penrith Stadium? Or? Uh, it is at Allianz. Roosters home ground. Who's the Roosters missing? Although he, Shane, uh, Sam Walker got cleared for the uh, first ever in NRL history that a Roosters player gets cleared for HIA. I oh, the Roosters could do that. Yeah, I'm just made up. Uh, uh, Lindsay Collins. Is he in doubt or is he playing? He's not playing. Oh, he's okay. not. He's not named. All right. Anyone else? Uh, that that seems. Who, it. who takes Lindsay Collins' spot? Uh, so they've got Terrell May starting, and then they've brought um, Egan Butcher in his place. Oh, so no C. O. Wong. No, I thought they would. I thought they would get C. O. Wong. But <sighs> I think, I, I think I who's good... in the Roosters line? Oh, uh, what's it? Oh, it's such a tough one to call because you know what? Parents still win a lot of games without Cleary. Yeah. yeah. See, no, see, I thought Nafahu White had a great game for the Roosters last week. He played very well. The I want to choose Penrith, but look, Damn. they've got Brad Schneider at seven, who's not bad. He From played. Canberra, yeah, yeah, he's so you know. You know, what? I'll go Roosters by four. As much as I want to say, look, and I'm saying, look, Penrith are unaffected, really. I mean, they're, they're affected somewhat, but they still win a lot of games. I'm, I, I want to say Panthers by eight. Yeah, it's a tough game to call. Yeah. Like, see, it's a, Roosters are doing well, but it just feels like, yeah, I've got them in a tight game, even against a, a Penrith game team missing their champion. Broncos, Cowboys. Uh, this one's at Suncorp Stadium. Uh, Tristan Saylor's at fullback for great, East Walsh. Great player. Great Anna, replacement. Adam Reynolds is at seven. He's back. Oh, he's back. Yeah, he's back. Saylor's a gun player. Fletcher he's Baker starting for Payne Haas. Yep. Um, I'll go the Cowboys just on their early season hot form. They do start slow, but I'm going to go Cowboys on this one by 14. I'm actually, I'm actually going to go the other way. I'm going to go Broncos by 12. Yep. All right. You think Cowboys will get undone this week? I, I, I just starts. think the Cowboys have had no, s- somewhat of an easy run and have put some big scores up against some... In, and they show they're vulnerable yeah, as well. Yeah, they're very vulnerable. If a, good, if a team can get... Imagine that game start. ended up 48-46. <laughs> that would have been ridiculous. Dragons, Seagulls. Seagulls, Eels had a good game. Uh, I expect the Dragons to bounce back, but I think the Eels will have too much. Eagles. Luke Brooks is playing too well. I think the Eagles... Should bounce back. That was... Oh, you know what? They lost a narrow game and they started off strong. Probably should have still got the win. I think some of their players were underwhelming. Is Ben Trebojevic in the lineup this week? Because I'd, I'd actually have him in the reserves or, or not even playing. Because he was absolutely ordinary on the weekend. Ben Trebojevic normally plays in the second yeah, round. Yeah, so Ben uh, Ben Trebojevic is at 12. But this Again, week, mm. this week, Jaden saw is back for the Dragons. And, and, so, is J- and so is Jacob Little. And Hamis Sele. Yep. Plays his first game for the Dragons. All right, or back, cool. back for the Dragons. Marshke off the bench. Marshke off the bench. Be good. Yeah. I, I like to see him get a run at six. Even alongside Ben Hunt. Like, they'll unlock a lot of things in that side. Um, anyone else change for the Seagulls? No. Where's the game at? Brookvale? Uh, Brookvale. Oh. Wynn Stadium in Wollongong. Oh, Wollongong. I'm going to go Dragons on this one. You reckon? Yeah, Wollongong. Eight points. Luke Brooks, I don't think, will have a stellar game as everyone thinks he will. I, I'm going Manly by 18. Wow, big win. Yeah. Who, who's Manly got back? Has that Jason Saab got back? Not yet. But they don't... They, they I didn't think Jason Saab was the issue, to be honest. No, no. I was just curious to know because he's another attacking weapon. Hmm. 
Um, when is he back? Honestly, I'm not. I, I watched that really doco on him on the weekend. That yeah, was, was nice. Did you love it? I didn't watch all. I watched bits and pieces. Like you know, it was going on about Lebo this, Lebo that. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the barbecue guy. Just quickly, next game, Titans and Dolphins. I've got Dolphins by plenty. They're playing at uh, Gold Coast, but I still think Dolphins by plenty. I'll go Dolphins by 22. Uh, Warriors Knights. And where's this game at? It's uh, a good question, actually. In uh, New Zealand? No, go, yeah, go Media Stadium in Auckland. I'm going to go New Zealand by 14. Yeah, I'm going to go New Zealand 13 plus. Um, Sharks Raiders. I'm going to go Raiders. Yeah, I'm going to go Raiders. It's, Raiders by four or it's eight. It's in Cronulla, but I'm going to go Raiders, Raiders by, by about four. 12, yeah. I like Raiders being the bogey team every year. Uh, Eels West Tigers. Go West Tigers. Yeah, I'm going to go Tigers by... 14. Yeah, Tigers by 13 plus. Yeah, oh, actually, I can't say it. I'm going to say Tigers by eight. I'm going to say Tigers by eight. Say, just, no, no, no. I reckon it'll be a good game. Tigers by eight. I'll just say Tigers get one on the Eels fans. And Melbourne's got the buy. Melbourne's got the buy. Good timing. They've yeah, had a few great injuries. timing for them. Yeah, good yeah. timing. They deserve it. With that, we have come to the end of, a, of the podcast. Thank you so much for your time. Really, really appreciate everything that you guys uh, uh, have done supporting us. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.